In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Many years ago, there was a young baseball pitcher named Rick Ankiel. Some people know his story. He was 21 years old and labeled a phenom. He was pitching in game one of the playoffs for the St. Louis Cardinals on an October afternoon on national television. And in the middle of the game, for some unknown reason, he lost his ability to throw a strike, something he had done hundreds of thousands of times in his life, he suddenly lost the ability to do that. So ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, somebody walked. Ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, another walk. Another three, one, two, three, four, another walk. And after he walked like five people in a row, the coach said, well, we don't want to lose the game, so they took him out of the game. Now, they said, well, we're not going to give up on you. I mean, you are, after all, a phenom. Everybody has a bad day once in a while. So they threw him out there a few days later, and it was the same result. Ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, walk. And after he walked about three people this time, they took him out of the game. And shortly after that, they sent him back to the minors because he couldn't throw a strike, and if you're a pitcher in baseball, that is your one and only job. And so back in the minors, Rick Ankeel actually stopped pitching and started and took up a baseball bat and started hitting, and he actually made it back to the major leagues as a hitter. And it was a pretty good one at that. So he wrote a story, he wrote a book, which is called The Phenom, and in that book, I'll give you the, the three lines that matter the most. He said, there's the life that you want, there's the life that you have, and there's what you do with that. The life you want, the life you have, and what you do with that, which of course he says is your character. No one has the ideal life. No one has the ideal life. Some of us have good lives, some of us have challenging lives, but no one has the ideal life, and the reason why is because the ideal is perfection, and no one has that. There's always some aspect of my life that is not perfect. As you may know from social media, I have beautiful grass in my yard, but I never take a close-up of the flower beds that have weeds in them. So you might think, wow, he has like the ideal yard. I just take the ideal photograph of it. In the ideal yard, there would be no weeds for me to pull. I have a wonderful ministry. But in the ideal ministry, there would be more help. The ideal sermon would probably be 10 words or less, and you'd remember it forever. You get the idea. Believe it or not, there is a gap between my sense of comfort and my sense of anxiety, and that gap is actually getting bigger. I'm sure that if you went through various aspects of your life, you'd find some gap in just about everything. Here are some gaps, and if you can read in the back there, you probably can't. This shelf represents the life I want this shelf represents the life I have, and here is your gap, so you can remember this, hopefully. Here are some other gaps. The job I want versus the job I have. The salary I make. I mean, sorry, the salary I would like to make versus the salary that I make. What my spouse, what I wish my spouse or my child would do and what they actually do. My ideal weight and where I am now. So the question is, what do we do with the gaps that we have in our life? So there are lots of choices. You can do something self-destructive. You can fill the gap 
with alcohol or drugs or pornography or any other number of sinful options that are out there. I don't recommend that. That's self-destructive. You can fill the gap with something that destroys somebody else. You could beat up on somebody's self-esteem or self-worth or just beat up on them. So there is that option to fill the gap. We had something that harms us, something that harms other people. We can fill the gap sitting by ourselves and crying about our gap. We actually could do nothing. We could do nothing and hope that the gap goes away. Or we might do nothing because we're paralyzed with fear and we stew about it. We do nothing. The Bible warns us about filling the gap with worldly things and losing our souls in the process. But it also gives us a solution. Take up the cross and follow. Take up the cross and put that in the gap right here. We can, we can deny what we want. We can deny anger, self-destruction, and self-pity and hopelessness. And we can take up a cross of hope. And that's the simple lesson of today. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. We preach on this message a couple of times a year, this Sunday and the third Sunday of Lent. And many people interpret the deny yourself as we can't have fun or we can't buy things. Today I want you to think of, your, of, your, of denying yourself as it refers to the gaps that we all have. Deny meaning put away the anger the frustration, the fear, and instead put the cross in there. Pray for wisdom. Pray for discernment. Offer forgiveness. Whatever is needed to fill whatever gap you have. Worship is not supposed to be passive. Where we sit and stuff happens. There's a gap there. We're supposed to worship actively. Many of us don't. And that's why there's a gap, and that gap is filled with disinterest, which is why many of us don't come to church as often as we should. We're going to have a procession of the Holy Cross in a minute. This commemorates the finding of the cross of Christ by St. Helen on September 14th in the year 325. The choir is going to sing, Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Focus on the have mercy on us. And think about your gaps. We are going to sing the hymn of the Holy Cross. By the way, if you want to follow along with the service, I'm going to be on page 85. And in the hymn, we sing grand victory to those who battle evil. This is not just the military or the politicians or the kings of centuries long gone. This is us today to battle evil and the temptation that is found in our gaps. In this service, the cross is both lowered and raised. Lowered in great reverence, raised in triumph. We have to lower ourselves in humility to accept our gaps and raise ourselves in confidence knowing that God can help us fill them. Those, there are some gaps that will never be closed. There will always be a gap between what we want and what we have. That space can be filled, as I said, with a lot of different things. Ideally, we put the cross there and follow, because God is the one who gives us the strength and grace to fill the empty spaces. And a life that honors God and shows patience and love, even with the empty spaces, will lead to the kingdom of heaven, where there will be the ideal. No pain, no sorrow, no suffering, no spaces, but the ideal life. If you're struggling with the ideal life, you're struggling with the gap, there are lots of things you can do. The first is simple.
Take some deep breaths. Take some deep breaths. The second, also simple. Offer it to God. What do we have to lose? Say something to God. Fill my gaps. The third thing, lean on someone else. That's one of the things that the church is here for. That's one of the things that confession does. It fills a lot of our gaps. And not, if not confession, just simple conversation to talk about our gaps. The people who sit and suffer with a gap for a long time, it's really not needed. And the, and the other thing to do is to cultivate friendships where we can encourage one another with the gaps that we all have. To be a friend who can help fill spaces, to have friends who can help fill your empty spaces. This, there is what we want, there's what we have, and there's what we put in here. And I hope that we will decide to put this in here, because this is what fills the gap. So as we're offering this procession in a minute, and I need a minute to move everything over, please pray for your gaps and ask God to fill them and pray for the wisdom to help fill the gaps of others and the patience to deal with the ones that you have that may or may not ever be filled. But pray for that day that we are going to come to the ideal place where there are no gaps, which is the kingdom of heaven. This gap is what we Western society calls character, but in the Christian world, it's called faith. God be with you.